أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأفضل الصلاة والتسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran and what he says is the truth. In the chapter of Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 23, Allah states, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here poses a challenge. He says, and if you are in doubt with respect to that which we have revealed unto our worshiper, then come up with one chapter from someone like him. And call your witnesses, call your people, so that they may bear witness if you are telling the truth. Sadaqallah al Ali al Azim, Amanna Billah. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome to another episode in these final, uh, foundational um, classes that we're taking, uh, insha'Allah. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to um, uh, be successful in, um, in these series of episodes. Today, um, we want to pick up where we left off last episode. Now in the last episode we spoke specifically about this verse that we started the, the, uh, uh, our lecture with. Now this uh, specific um, uh, verse is very important. Why? Because if you recall from the last episode we said that the challenge was first to come up with a book like it, second to come up with ten chapters uh, that they made up like it, and then finally to come up with one chapter like it. Now, of course, they failed, they weren't able to. So Allah poses this fourth challenge, and that's to come up with one chapter from someone like him, which means that the next challenge was the messenger himself. So what we'll attempt to do today is we'll, again, take a look at um, uh, the intellectual idea behind uh, a teacher or someone who's going to uh, deliver the message, then we'll look at what are the characteristics that are expected of that person who will deliver the message, and then finally we'll take a look at the Holy Quran and the Hadith and what we can learn regarding um, the messenger himself. So first off, you know, just as we said last episode that when it comes to um, the message, it, it's important for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell us what it is that He wants of us, right? We said that this is a logical necessity, just like if we were to take a course, they would give us a course outline in a textbook, then also when we take a course, they not only give us the course outline in the textbook, but they give us the teacher, and the teacher has to be one who is qualified. He has to be one who can teach us what is missing between the lines, right? He helps us read between the lines. Not only that, he helps us answer the questions, complete the exercises, gives us assignments, right? So that means that this individual who is assigned this role has to be one who is qualified. So we're going to take a look at that aspect inshallah in a minute. But let's think about also different empirical examples that we have around us in our daily lives. For example, when we come to this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides us with parents, right? Now the role of the parent is to guide us. We use them as um, uh, um, a, a source of information that we cling on to, that we emulate, correct? So it only makes sense that since we realize the role of our parents and the importance that um, we look for a guide always in our lives. Let, let me give you a, a, another simple example. If I want to get from point A to point B um, in a city, now I can go and just drive around and try to randomly try to find it, ask so many people. Some people would know how to get there, some people might not know how to get there. But if I have a GPS, right, that's pre programmed with all the information about that specific city, then all I do is I put in the address and the GPS just directs me where to go. So also, if you think about it in another way, if I go to a university, a university not only gives me a book, just as in high school, just as in elementary school, just as in middle school, but they all also give me a teacher and that teacher has to be qualified. They have to be the best person for that position. So they go through training in a university, they go through their practicum where they learn how to teach, and then if they have the right qualifications and references, they're hired. 
So too is the case if, for example, my, uh, we mentioned the example of if my parents were to give me a computer, for example, or a digital device, and they say, oh, this is going to help you be successful in life, but they don't provide me a manual, right? So let's say they provide me a manual, but we know that most manuals, they're deficient. So I might need a YouTube video, someone to teach me, someone who's qualified from that company, correct? So you get the idea. Now, intellectually speaking then, there is a necessity um, for a teacher. Now, intellectually, we've proven that. The next thing that we want to look at is we want to say, well, what are the characteristics of this individual? Because we said at the end of the road, he has to be qualified. So who qualifies him? Now, if we're dealing with the limited world, correct, and um, uh, the stakes aren't as high, it's just about, for example, how to use a car, or to graduate for, with, a, with a bachelor's degree, or a master's degree, or a PhD, and so forth, then those who will teach me will be part of the limited world, meaning that their knowledge is gained from the limited world, from those who have studied this world and all the things that are within it. However, when it comes to Allah, the unlimited creator, who is all perfect, the stakes are much higher, which means that Allah would not choose someone who is less than perfect to deliver the message. Why? Let me explain to you. Let's say, for example, uh, someone comes to you and they're smoking a cigarette and they're in bad health and they say to you, you should really stop smoking. It's bad for your health as they puff the cigarette smoke in your face. Would you take them seriously? The answer, of course, is no. If someone always uses profanity and they come up to you and they say to you, you really shouldn't swear, would you take them seriously? Of course not. But if someone comes to you and you consider them an exemplar, someone who you know would do no wrong, are you more likely to follow their advice or no? Of course you are. Therefore, when it comes to the um, message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the unlimited creator, this individual would have to have that those same standards as Allah has. And Allah will have had to have chosen him and given him, given him that role. And that only makes logical sense. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, He says specifically in this issue of whether this person would be purified and chosen by Allah or not, um, we, we reach the logical necessity that he would have to be. Um, the Quran also reflects this in the chapter of Al Imran, chapter 3, verses 33 and 34, where Allah says, Inna Allah astafa Adama wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al alameen dhurriyatan ba'dhuha min ba'd. So Allah here says, Allah chose and purified Prophet Adam, Prophet Nuh, Prophet, uh, the progeny of, of uh, Prophet Ibrahim and the progeny of Al Imran. And that they are a progeny, one from the other, meaning that Allah chose for representation and leadership on this earth, those who are only from, from that lineage. <clears throat> Therefore, now that I understand this, I understand that there are individuals that are chosen and purified by Allah for this specific role. But would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place a representative on earth? <coughs> the answer is also in the Quran. Intellectually, we know that he must, he has to. Why? Because the stakes are too high, as we said. So, Allah says this in the Holy Quran also. In the chapter of Al-Baqarah also, chapter 2, verse 30, Allah speaks to the malaika. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعَلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, He says, I am placing on this earth a caliph. Now the form of ja'ilun in Arabic morphology is in the form of fa'ilun, which means always doing. So the question is then, well, who will this messenger be? So now I know Allah will place a caliph, a representative on this earth. I know that he would have to be purified and chosen by Allah, right? And now the next thing is, well, who is he? So looking at that time when the revelation actually occurred and that challenge was posed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the challenge was what? Bring me a verse, uh, bring me a chapter from someone like him. So what criteria did he have to fulfill? We look at the characteristics of Allah, we find that Allah is unlimited, Allah is all consistent, Allah is non-contradictory, Allah has no flaws, which means that he would have to be flawless, um, he would have to be consistent, he would have to be a person that everybody trusts and everybody reveres. And so, who comes into the picture revealing the message of Allah but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. He was not only beloved by those who disagreed with him, 
but he was beloved even to those who are his enemies. How so? He was known as As-Sadiq Al-Amin, which means the, the trustworthy and the truthful. By whom? By Quraysh themselves, those who were the tyrants of the time, those who were the tribal leaders. When they would leave on business trips, they would actually leave their wealth entrusted to him. That's how much they trusted him and believed that he said the truth. When they had disputes, they would use him as a judge and as a moderator between them and those who um, uh, they, uh, uh, they were against. So this tells us what? This tells us that here's a person who has an exemplary personality who, and character, uh, a person who is trusted by all, therefore if he comes and tells them the truth, then definitely they will listen to him. Now, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he comes out and tells them that he is the messenger of Allah, it doesn't happen right away, right? So the question is though, um, why is it that it happened that way? Now remember how we mentioned last episode that the Arabian Peninsula is a peninsula that's very arid. It's um, neither the Persians nor the nor the Babylonians nor the nor the Assyrians nor the Romans nor the Greeks um, were able to infiltrate that area. So part of the miracle was the fact that this area changed from the inside out outward, right? And the way that that happened is by one man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran that the role of this man, what it is, in the chapter of Jum'ah, chapter 62, verse 2, Allah says, So Allah, what does He say here? He says, He is the one that sent to them a messenger from within them. So that means that He had to be someone that is from them someone that they trust, someone who speaks their language, right? يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That he is able to convey that which is revealed upon him using their language and that he is able to explain it to them. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And that he purifies them by doing so, meaning that it was a corrupt society, so his role was to purify that society and um, his role was to be a teacher. وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ To teach them the book and wisdom. Why? Allah says, وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Because they had deviated before him. Therefore the role of this teacher was to come in, was to um, uh, uh, speak their language, convey it to them properly, uh, purify them therefore, and finally do what? Remove them out of the state of deviation that they're in. Now the question then remains that was this prophet enough? Meaning that could we end this religion with just the prophet? Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the message to Prophet Muhammad, the first thing that he did was he said, well in secret for the first you know, few years you should go out and just reveal the message in secret until you can gain numbers and then after that, after those three years are passed, you can start in um, revealing to everyone so that it becomes public knowledge, right? Why? Because the area wasn't ready, right? Those who are in power were those who controlled the religion of idolatry at the time or paganism and therefore he had to build a strong base, um, a strong um, uh, foundation of companions who were strong in their belief system and then he would be able to propagate the message. But was he enough is the question, meaning what? Meaning that after he dies, is it enough to say Hasbuna kitabullah, that the book of God is enough for us? Now if we recite the Holy Quran alone, the Quran says in the chapter of Al Imran chapter 3 verse 132, Allah states, Ati'u Allah wa Rasula. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Obey Allah and the Messenger عفواً أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Obey Allah and the Messenger lest Allah have mercy upon you. So what if the Messenger is no longer there? Next episode inshallah we'll deal with this issue. We ask that Allah gives us tawfiq to continue these episodes 
And we ask that Allah brightens our paths with the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt and keeps us on the straight path steadfastly. Hada walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidin mursaleen. Habibi ilahan alameen. Abil Qasim al-Mustafa Muhammad wa ala ala bayti al-Tayyibin. Allah.